from the roof than is a mechanical room. So, and with their change in HVAC configuration, it's unneeded space. So in all of the plans we're going in upstairs, we're opening them back up. And these are actually, there's a pillar here, here, one in the middle. And these areas are kind of divided out by, right now already, natural rooms, but it's just different ceiling heights. So the two rooms with the low ceiling area, we're talking about for lounge area and multi-purpose. The one that's defined as lounge area, with this new wall coming up in the back, we would have a board desk here in the middle of the room, and it's just, when you divide the room out, you're, you're going to wind up with about 15 feet in front of it. It's not really going to be suitable for dining. It's just going to become a kind of, I don't know, it's empty space when there's not a board meeting. And to keep a clean wall is where the partitions proposed down this area kind of block out that board area. The block. And are they permanent walls between one two meeting rooms? Yes, one, two, this, three? Th these are all permanent walls that would fall into the natural layout of the building where there's already dividers and different roof lines um, and different ceiling lines. And is there any reason that the, the board uh, permanent table would be in number three and leave the lounge area open? Well, and that's, I guess, where, and that was, and when you, we go into that option three, okay. that's okay. where we flipped, okay. that's where we flipped things around on it. And, then, uh, and this turn grill kitchen would only, That's our banquet kitchen. Right, would all, but not be servicing the and that's not there itself. Now. But only, that is the same banquet kitchen that's there now, so that would just be restored. Okay. And, um, there, there, um, there was questions from LU on, in, in I believe the second layout where we get that they have a talk of just having the downstairs as walk up, and then really moving the, the primary operations of the turn road to the second floor. Uh -huh. That's not what this time. But I think that's in going to the template. That's where to the, the discussion. It's really we're talking two different kitchens on turn road depending on. The usage, which from where we where we left things at our last board meeting, we were agreeing to expand the turn grill downstairs and keep that for our, our regular daily service. And the question comes into the upstairs. I think now on the banquet service, how much we want to put in that kitchen and where we want to go with our larger um, function capacity in that area. Well, the kitchen, if I'm not mistaken, is bigger than the kitchen that exists right now. These these are not the scale. <laughs> these are for visual um, impact, but they are not. That's why at the last board meeting when we were going through the first four layout, I had I presented the separate scale drawing for the first four. And until we have an idea of what what the consensus is for a layout, we weren't putting this out to engineering to get you know scaled prints on the layout. We need to understand what the agreement is on the use and. A, the ideal scenario, what you want delivered for that use, and then we'll have scaled prints for approval. This is conceptual. This is conceptual, and, and trying to, and in this area, it was how multi purpose we want to make the dining function here versus fixed. And, you know, I, and really, to, in this configuration, this gives us three smaller meeting, meeting rooms, which in the, the third option that was recommended by the staff, it was more fixed banquet because. We saw a revenue producing need there, and it was only two meeting rooms um, on top of the boardroom. Where this, the boardroom became flexible, so we got three meeting rooms. Uh, I know I don't have a hope of getting this <coughs> one answered if I couldn't get the other one, but uh, could you show me I'm, if I walk up the stairs to go into this place? I see there's a reception area. Now I want to go to boardroom, meeting room number two. Where do I go? There, there would be a hallway right here, and that would give you meeting room two and three through that hallway. And that's not depicted, but that would—that's where we would have to go for a, a functional use, so that we could still have this area in operation and allow access. And would and would take you into that uh, lounge area, boardroom, or and the the. the the downside on this configuration is if you're going to a 140 seat banquet and you had overlapping small meetings, you're either coming through 
the bank the back end of the banquet from because it's the same front entrance, or we're using the deck for access, which is possible, but it's it would really only give us meeting room three for access on the off deck. What's the cost difference? Uh, option one and option three, second floor. No, nominal. Nominal. <laughs> there are costs for basically, I mean, in, in all configurations as proposed, there was maintaining the kitchen. And we go back, the, the kitchen amounted to 37300 going into the budget for uh, that second kitchen equipment. And that was factoring in the uh, resale of the equipment that's in there and what we would think the salvage market and then replace it. Just like the first floor, we would need another walk-in on top of the right. grill, fryer oven, etc. So what's running through my mind with the cost between the two options not being a major factor <laughs> is what is the best um, option that gives us the most in reconfiguring the existing space and, uh, and then the county code are, is there any greater impact in one option versus the other in terms of any any permits uh, and codes or like that? The uh, DAO or what? The, the imp, as far yeah. as building permits, compliance, liquor license, anything, the, there is no difference in the eyes of the county on us taking any of the options. The only issue is if we eliminate the kitchen and don't maintain, if we don't maintain one aspect of the facility, which we do have our liquor license for up there and we have our health department clearance for the kitchen up there. If we let them lapse and then 10 years down the road decide we want to go back to that service in the facility and we try and reapply for it, we would be subject to the applicable zoning regulations and restriction of the period of time of the application versus right now we're on zoning off of when it was done 30 years ago. And in the case of parking, which is the issue we hit with the new Yacht Club, the, the zoning for parking has been modified in the period of time since both buildings were built. And that's why now on the new Yacht Club, we have greater parking issues because the, with a new building, we fell into essentially new operations on the code of 2012 for zoning parking versus 1970, whatever. The golf club would be the same thing. So right now we have no issues with parking or anything else because we're, main, we're, we're maintaining existing facilities on existing places. If we lose them and ever want them back, it's going to be much harder. And we know that any option, I mean, if there are other walls that have to stay, you know, they always talk about. There's, there are no, there, we have <coughs> columns that are, ne that are necessary in key points, and those are here, 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 here. And this is, this is a, a load-bearing wall, so there will be columns in this wall. We can open it up greater, but there's still going to be supports in there. Um. Do all the supports that are there now stay? I think there are some that are cosmetic and some that are structural, and that's the point. Like right here is a junction, right here is a junction, right here, right here. There's four, four in this main banquet area that are structural columns, and that there's we can open up the room. You're still going to have those columns, and that's where the the additions and roof lines have shifted on the building. This particular wall is also one where there's necessary supports in there, and this wall. Right now is actually a solid wall, and we were able to open it up to an extent. But there's still supports the line. I can't tell you exactly where the points are in there because we haven't done, we haven't opened the wall to see what's where the structural points lie in it. Yes. So you, the total turn grill dining area, uh, excluding excluding the multi-purpose area, multi-purpose area really is an open dining. Area, I think. Well, it would be. The, 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 it would be this. This would be a 
wall that would be open, but would, you know, we're talking dividers all the way through so that you could flip the room to the different purposes in this configuration. But, it, and, and because of the way the roof lines work on that building, you're not going to have one big grand open room like the second floor of the Yacht Club or the community center because we have different roof lines that are in different structures where you're going to have columns in there just like you do now. Yeah. It's how many is the question, and it's based on the layout. Okay. How many uh, with the dining area, the green dining area, you have an estimate of how big that uh, That would, that's the, that is slightly larger than the current uh, dance floor area in there. That's going to, by capacity, be about 65. Uh, the, bar, the bar capacity would be 20, and your dining area then with the bar is going to be down to um, 50 to 60. Yeah, so you get up to above 100 by adding and, the multiple. And then we area. flip back the wall this way where we we're able to get to the 140 for a golf outing by utilizing that, that additional space. Can we see option three? I thought that was the one that we were. That was a recommendation. <coughs> the recommendation. That was a recommendation by staff. Yeah. And th this takes, if you notice this back wall, in option one, we were using the wall right with the stairwell. We actually pushed back another almost 12 feet there. Um, so we get a little more of the dining area. Um, and this becomes fixed. So we really have that larger function type space permanently accessible. And in pushing back, that's where we go down to two meeting rooms and then the boardroom. And this one has the hallway to pick the URS before, but that will be on the on the back wall. Yeah, well, the hallway would have to extend back out into the... Again, the, not, not the scale, but the, the concept of the hallway actually does appear on this one. Yeah, but it, the hallway yeah. would have to go all the way across yeah. Yeah. because that's where the entrance is. Yes. Okay. And in this one, in this layout, the... The only area that you really lose in a large banquet is going to be this front meeting room because that would be accessible from the dining room only. But we are able to get this meeting room and the boardroom for other groups or functions to use, even if we had a bank. So, yeah, and the boardroom is only going to be used when boards. Are. But well, it would be. I mean, you use other things. It yeah. could be used for other. And what? What's the comparison? To the size of the board? Yes. You have any idea? To what? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. And that's where we have that's our twenty-five percent. Twenty-five percent smaller. Yeah. The boardroom. So seventy-five percent. Yes, that's seventy-five percent. We're slightly narrower and, and and slightly shorter. Of course, there's nothing in this to prevent us from having larger meetings in the S. No. I mean, this this is a board. Now we're using it. The <coughs> the. For our regular meetings, uh, the concept that was put through all three of these was having, and I don't, I think the desk might back really, you know, much like the local town councils and commissioners meeting rooms, where we have a fixed desk, where we have fixed AV, and you know, our our struggles of audio equipment and video quality, we could have a permanent setup, and with us permanently in place and a permanent desk. Where we could have permanent microphones and fixed cameras would better allow us to share the contents of those meetings out to our residents and not be in the temporary setup that functioning one right now. So whether it would be a, a small meeting or a big meeting, the board would be set up in there with AV and in a forum that would be you know easily broadcast on the 78. And in this situation, Brett. The dining area will have differing uh, ceiling heights as well as existing columns, correct? Yeah, and, any, and because of the, the structure of that building, any any layout on there is going to have columns. And there would be different ceilings. Brent, if you just uh, clarify one thing, the, uh, the boardroom is just the name of the space. It's not a dedicated room just for the, the, the only piece meetings. that would be dedicated is our our desk in the front of the room and the um, the concept that was discussed on that was to get some type of perk that we right. could just pull across the front so that desk would be out of sight not for interference but that would be a 
much like the with the Marlin Room or the East Room or the Community Center. So Calvary clubs can music. have uh, functions, meetings, or whatever, yes. if need be, or other homeowners. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is there I, is there any way to make meeting going back to the fact that this is not the boardroom is not quite as big as acid deep, knowing that that fills at certain times. Is there any way to make meeting room number two make that divider put that on the other plans? So that, no. No, 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 anything is possible. Oh. That's why we're talking about it. Like on the boardroom, one yes. you know, side to the meeting room, too, could that be flexible? And then we could open it up all the way for a bigger room. It yes. would be actually as big. I guess that's that's good 25%. That, yes, that and, would, you know. that, we, we, we would not gain the length, but we would gain the width, the width in the room. And so, the width would surpass what we're losing in the length. So we could still have By it. square footage, you get there. Like one time. Well, I know, but I'm just, uh, you know. Well, and in talking with the golf operations about our annual meeting, um, looking at their operations and the time we had the annual meeting, um, we didn't feel that we would actually be able to have the annual meeting. Because because it's a Saturday morning in prime season. Yeah, the the golf course is packed. And so the, the one time that we would conceivably overfill the place at the time that we just couldn't use it. In a normal board meeting, work in a cycle where it's not really an issue. It's the annual meeting, and that's where the size was kept smaller because the assumption was either the acetic room as we've been doing it or the yacht club both have space that could hold the capacity that we want in the annual meeting, and we could use one of those facilities for that this year. The outdoor... <laughs> yeah, wait. I mean, we have we do have plenty of other large space. The outside deck areas; those are going to be a deck and not covered. Correct. Okay, so they are. But I am looking at the space that is currently windowed and covered right now. Correct. What's in what's in that blue checkered pad, the blue and white checkered pattern are the what the old decks that were closed in. They originally started as decks. They went to glass enclosures that went then went to walled and windowed enclosures. Yeah. And just for the heck of it, can we see two? I know we were generally <laughs> focusing on one and three, but three. And two is, for the most part, identical to one outside of the three meeting room became the pro shop. And the meeting rooms went downstairs, and that's where, in order to accommodate the space downstairs, we yeah, we, we lose the turn grill. Forget that. Yeah. Two two's no longer an option. So it's <laughs> I, I think that the, and not that these two are the end all, but from where our previous discussions were, the questions that I still didn't feel like were a hundred percent answered is are we maintaining banquet facilities in there? And do we have adequate meeting space as presented, or do we need to modify the layout for one or both of those questions? So if we take back. Sort of liking that better, because it gives us more flexibility. Right, in one of our previous conversations, did we not mention the fact that, uh, you know, the Yacht Club is viewed as sort of premium sort of wedding facility, and this could be used for, what's the right term, less than premium or a smaller type wedding and other types of dining events. Wasn't that one of the benefits of having, you know, a dining area like that? Correct. And I think, you know, in our overall premise of the funding allocation here and (laughs) the greater community purpose on the building, just because we're saying in option three, dining area. This is essentially meeting space. And with having the ability to host a function for the other, you know, 25 days in the month, that is space that can be used exactly the same as the second floor of that club is used right now. I mean, there are uh, card clubs that meet on the second floor in the open banquet space to, you know, play card games and conduct their meetings. I mean... <laughs> Albeit there's suffering now the HVAC right. conditions in there, but yeah. it's it is there's no exclusivity in that space. Yes, it just it was. I, I think that the the premise was to make sure it was clear that we had a fixed banquet area, and 
knowing that there are going to be columns in there. It's not, you know, it is not going to be the, um, the, to the, to the standard of the yacht club and environment with a new big open room. It will be a, a refreshed room with refreshed surfaces and hiding the pipes and electric wires and everything else that's exposed on the walls would, would be done. But we're still going to have stuff like columns and it's going to be a, a step down in the level of luxury and appearance from the yacht club. Right. Um, question for you, and this is more really an issue of logistics, and scheduling the event, whether it's a banquet or whether it's clubs, meetings. You know, when you have a dining area that's actually a flex space for reconfiguration and you have a bridge club booking the space and maybe a couple of other things, you know, month from now, regularly scheduled, then you have a request for a banquet. Uh, and you know you can accommodate it because you can repurpose the space, yet you have bookings. Is this, how do you envision this being uh, managed? Uh, if, if there is a scheduling well, issue. It, it, right now, I mean, the way all our meeting spaces manage is through the front desk of Recreation and Parks. And Recreation and Parks takes the bookings and they schedule public works for flipping the rooms. And if it's, you know, changing from air boardroom layout to a, you know, breakfast with Santa layout where you have dining table, the, um, the, Recreation and Parks folks make sure that there's adequate time between bookings, and they handle public works making an immersion facility. And you know, it, in the case right now, we have storage sheds where our extra chairs and tables go for what is not stored in the facility. And we have the forklifts and trailers and trucks to move that between yeah. rooms and, and buildings as needed. Now I understand that. I think my, my my question was more related. If you have that flex space booked for clubs mm-hmm. in a month from month in advance, and then you have a, a, a golfers, a group of 50 people that are coming for that following month to and need a banquet space, you now have a choice. So are either telling them no because you already have committed space to clubs meetings, or you find an alternative for clubs to meet, uh, alternative space, so you don't lose the revenue on this banquet. This is where I see a potential conflict. How would that be? Are you talking about that would be as applicable uh, option one. Well, option three, because it's a much greater ba- dining banquet but those are fixed, room. Fixed walls, right? No, but say, if, say if, if, if the if the bridge club was using the dining space, say for their weekly function, that was booked throughout the whole year. But then we had a golf out, and they came up, and it then became let the bridge club, who's non-paying or pays a minimal fee, to use the space versus a couple thousand dollar banquet, what do we do? And what what happens now, because we have the same conflict. And I'm not be picking on the bridge. No, I'm just, I was just using as an example. But we, we handle essentially the same conflicts right now because when we schedule a special board meeting and we want to take the Aztec room, by our, our guidance that's um, published for facilities rentals, the board takes priority over anything paid or unpaid. So if we say we want something, what happens behind the scenes is Michelle goes over to Rec and Parks and says, well, what's there? Can we do it? If something was already booked, then it goes into a matter of where can we move within our resources to accommodate all parties. And in the case of that, the, the club function that typically has that room every day would then be more than likely asked to move to another facility. And what we have done and happened at our board meeting on the 14th of November, actually, is we end up moving a club over to the Yacht Club, and they use the Yacht Club facility because we had booked all other spaces. So knowing all of the rooms that we have across the Rec and Parks facility, the Golf Club, and the Yacht Club, um, it, a, a, a pop-up on one normally leaves us. We haven't been in a position yet where we can't accommodate, but there is flexibility requested. And the flexibility normally comes on the lowest ranking. I guess group. So if it's a group of residents that are using a facility for a minimum or no fee for a, a a club function, they would they fall down lower in the totem pole from a paid event or a board event, and they would normally be the ones asked to accommodate the higher ranking uh, function. We're eliminating some space where people 
do go now, those quotes that are called, where you've got to sort out by that. We have there. people close to go in there now, go in there <laughs> and, 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 and play cards. So you are eliminating that in both of those options. But in, in, that, in looking at what we're gaining, we actually wind up, because that, that's the only, that group comes in isolated and they have the whole second floor. And depending on the, really heating and air conditioning situation, depends on whether they go outside or stay on the main floor. Last week, they were out on the main floor because I believe it was a cold day and it wasn't, the, the outside was too cold. Um, with having four core areas in here now, and we're replacing with this two rooms. It's this room and the other conference room in this building. And if you take that big area, we actually pick up one additional room in, in that equation. Because so you have the one larger area that we're replacing with four smaller areas. We have the two rooms here, which take up two meeting rooms, and the board room is like a bonus area. That reminds me, this is actually also tied in something else with that redefine it, which is what this facility becomes. Yes. But this is a this agreeing to meeting space here is a prerequisite of us being able to consider anything with this building because I need to clear out I have the two problems I have in this building for accommodating the request of the police department is the two meeting rooms and three storage rooms. And the storage room I believe we have a solution for through IT and document archiving. This the meeting rooms are we need somewhere else to go. This discussion also revolves around the motion that's after this to complete the first floor pro shop downstairs as opposed to option two when the pro shop is upstairs. Yeah, I think we already yeah, have option two. So uh, are, is, is this discussion for the proof concept of first or second option because they both is pretty much exactly the same amount of funds? And is, is the discussion to allow funds to go as budget guidance for, for next fiscal year? to approve going forward without determining exactly how the walls and rooms are flatted up? Or are we trying to say we want to approve, put a motion forth right now to do the second floor in a distinct manner? I, so I'm, wondering if I'm this hoping we're not voting on a design. So, my, so that's my point, to, to move the discussion forward, both one and three the same, I think it's exact the same cost, exactly. Uh, well, and, and, and are we just here to approve the concept yeah, as a question question. put in the budget for, for next year? That's that's my question. Okay. Let me ask uh, Cheryl's question in a slightly different way. Um, the restored outside deck, uh, I know you said, well, you're, as part of it, we're gaining rooms here and we have moved. Aside from that, I mean, that's space that is currently we can use right now, and we can't use after we take this option. I mean, it's as simple as that. It's, we had more space, now we'll have less space. Uh, it, it's it's arguable because at this point, almost the entirety of the space is unused. I mean, you know, you, except by Anna. <laughs> talking about from an environmental standpoint. Well, from yeah, and. Mind. Well, okay, so talk to me. Tell me, tell me why. But well, when you that outside space was enclosed, and this is before my time here, but my understanding is for larger banquet functions, which, when the facility wasn't maintained in an operating condition, would allow us to have larger wedding parties or banquets or functions on that floor and accommodate more people in an enclosed climate environment. Yes. Since then. We built the Yacht Club, which has a, has a capacity of 300 people on the second floor and negates the need for this space, which at for one point was bigger than the Yacht Club. For my Yes. Yes. I mean, I, and I, I agree that that's the case. And at looking at the need for space and the, the – that what – Golf perceived as the value of those decks on the outside and restoring them so that when you have a golf outing function, that that was your, those are typically during the summer, and those are, you know, where your cocktail hour would be that you wanted it as open as possible to take in 
the views from the building because at the end of the day, we're going to make the building inside nice, but it's still not going to be new. The greatest asset, much like the Yacht Club, are the vistas from outside of the building. And we want to make them as accessible and as open to the clientele that are coming in there to, you know, put off the best image. And the best image is, is not what the building looks like, what's outside of the building when I call. Yeah, going back to the question, um, I think. Finish your well, proceed. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just got the answer to to uh, to one, but uh, follow Speak up. Up. Come on, ask, ask your question. <laughs> so you're telling me that the the reason for eliminating all of that space is that we will have. A better view during golf banquets. Well, I don't think it should preclude somebody from bringing up a drink upstairs uh, during the day, and when they finish golfing, if they want to sit upstairs on outdoor tables and stuff and enjoy the view. I mean, it just it just because it's a, a, not a golf outing, why couldn't someone go up there and utilize it? They could. We've just expanded the downstairs area for them to well, do that. Well, the question is why why do we need it enclosed? I'll turn it around the other way. Well, because you're doing all kinds of reconfiguration of this building, and, and we have continuing complaints that we don't have enough meeting in, inside meeting space. Uh, and I'm just asking the question. I'm not pro or against it or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. I, I, uh, I mean, you're, you're. I mean, the fact is, you're eliminating space. That can be used. I mean, it is usable. I mean, you just have to do something about the AC and, and so forth. And the reason you're doing it is first because it presents when we do have a golf banquet, which are not that frequent, uh, you'll have a better view. Well, for, well, for any banquet. No, I, I have a point to that. Right now, it's one open area where sometimes uh, they play cards where the boardroom is, and sometimes they'll play bridge and that closed area outside, but in this configuration, you have one, two, three, four areas for different meetings at the same time. You don't have it this point. They're just four different rooms now that four different groups can meet at one time, where now it's just one open area where oh, no. one group meets the at overall, one time. The overall concept, I mean, I have... No so I actually to. think there's more meeting space. I'm only talking... More meeting room I'm areas. Only... Let's, let's not say space, but area. For different people to meet at the same time. Yeah, there's no question that's an improvement. And, and my only question is, uh, space that is currently in is going to be on. Why do we want it? And that's what my question was. And I think, okay, if that's the answer, I'll think about well, that. Uh, and I would say that the most important factor to get out of today. I mean, we can we can partitions and rooms are really going to come down to final plans that are going to come into approval out of the budget funding in May. we got five months to get through that. What we need to get through today so I can accurately portray the budget is, are we keeping a banquet kitchen? Because that was a question. And in principle, is there any other significant change to the proposed usage that would impact the budget. So we have a budget right now of uh, $417,000 associated with this concept of space allocation and kitchen banquet function, et cetera. And the kitchen itself is a high impact dollar item. So it, for whatever reason, which I think no, from the staff perspective, no one recommends, you want to eliminate the kitchen. That is a big impact on the budget. And I need to understand that going into it. If we want to keep the kitchen and the banquet space is valued, we want to move the bar, we, we're taking on those expenses, we need to account for them in the budget. But well, you're also saying that eliminating kitchen presents perhaps other problems. I mean, we're changing the use and configuration. Well, the, county, the county's going to let us do it perfectly fine today. Yeah. But if, if we want it back, the next generation the board comes in and says, we want banquet space here, the odds of us getting it back are, uh, I mean, it's it's a it's an uphill battle. We probably would be able to do it. 
it will probably incur a cost. It's probably going to have other factors, just like our stormwater mitigation problems and everything else. I mean, we know we can't really expand that parking lot because of stormwater mitigation and wetlands. I mean, we, there are issues that we don't want to get into. And that's why I, I, the recommendation is keep it there, even if we're not doing a lot of banquet function, because it's an asset we have that we don't want to take away. But that's for the board to decide. So that, that was going back when I interrupted you, didn't realize I was interrupting. Your <coughs> question to us is whether it's option one or option three or some iteration of that, are we in agreement to go forward with this and then deal with the specifics of first of all, which is part of which we've all agreed to do? And I think, I think that's what we want to do. And that answer is yours. But to your point about the kitchen, that's really the only tweaking of this that, that we have to say whether we're option one or option three in, in any, any iteration. Do want to keep that kitchen because of potential future use of it, and so that's why I think you were asking to make a decision mm -hmm. that Does the 417 include HVAC? Well, that was approved separately in the $125,000 reserve allocation that's from, right. from the last meeting. So the the 417 does not include it because it was already funded outside of that money. The 417 is the um, Associated electrical, plumbing, kitchen work, the uh, flooring, walls, nothing, demo, etc. Okay, nothing will, nothing in a, yeah, okay. And, because of the size of the HVAC. No, nothing we're, we're, we're cooling the same space, that's where we put the units, it's going to make a difference. Yeah. And what, what I hope to get out of today is an agreement on the concept, and then subsequent to the other correspondence that we've had from people concerned with ADA compliance, etc., I'm meeting with the county on Monday with Eddie to relay our conceptual usage and plans along with the conceptual budget associated with that to make sure that we're in compliance with zoning, ADA, and any other codes that would come in so that when you get the budget next month, if there is a curveball thrown to us for something that at this point has not been an issue, it's accounted for on the front end, and we're very comfortable that we have a plan that the county has improved in concept, the board has approved in concept, and we have, through means construction data, accounted for the cost of that plan in the fiscal 18 budget. May I uh, ask the chairman to suspend this? And uh, we have at least two golfers here, or people play golf, and, uh, and a member, and Joe. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I because one of the reasons of having this as an open meeting was to get questions from uh, community, so we don't have much community. So, at any rate, I move that we suspend. All right, have a vote. Anybody uh, all in agreement to suspend the rules and have input from the community? Raise a hand. All right. Anyone want to speak to this issue? Listen to you discuss all this, these different plans. Was there ever any consideration to an option where the existing downstairs turn earlier was repurposed as a meeting? And a single turns grill dining area with pups? The from from John and LU, we were told that it was it, we needed to keep some function of a turn grill on the first floor, even if it was a straight walk up window, and that 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 space then would need to be somehow made existent with a small kitchen and carry out because um, in in our current layout. Um, in order to have ADA compliance, their access to the second floor for all golfers, if, if you can't walk up, would have to be coming around to the front door and then using the, the handicap lift to get to the second floor for food service. And it was felt that that was a disservice to the golfers if we moved to the second floor only because we would not then be accessible to all people, you know, passing by. And it would, it would be something that would add to time of play for open access to, to food service. The only reason I ask is 
At one time, that place had a lovely bar in it. had a brick bar and stuff. Bar. It was pretty nice in that second floor. And it just seems to me, and I'm not a golfer, so but if I were a golfer and I finished golfing, I think I'd like to go into a nice place after round the ball, as opposed to buried in a corner down there. Uh, I don't know. I, I, well, I, I think in the funding that was passed at the last board meeting, the the lower level turn grill was being made into a very nice space. And I mean, we are talking the same solid stone countertops that we have incorporated into the Yacht Club bars. Um, High quality interior with nice view. Exactly. I mean, you're basically taking the first floor bar of the Yacht Club and duplicating it over in the turn grill. Same finishes, same windows, and out to the quadruple sliders versus the um, sunroom windows that we have in that dining area to open up out on the course. But, but at the same time, Proving for our area, so it's easier for wait staff to actually be able to reach over. Yeah, we're, we're doing the full 26 inch bar top, not the 18 of the yacht club. Yeah, okay. And Brett's going to transport the flies over too, so we're going to have flies. Mr. Ringstall, I just hear in the discussion, I, I go back to a comment someone, I guess it was Brett, made a couple of meetings ago about this configuration. Uh, this configuration here is not intended in, in my view to be solely for golfers in no way it's the only incidental golfing use may be a golf outing in that dining area it's just more oriented towards the entire community including that dining area being used for smaller uh Instead of a premium wedding, you know, let's say you're on your fourth marriage, you might want something, <laughs> <laughs> something there with a piling first. The first three wedding, not all <laughs> But I, yeah, my, my, my point is, I, I don't see it. Uh, my apologies. If you go no, we have to suspend the Roberts rule more often to get this <laughs> kind of. Uh, <laughs> but, but my point is, I, I don't see, I, at a minimum, the only golf thing that's going on here on the second floor being occasion. Uh, a golf outing uh, banquet as, as opposed to possibly other parties coming in or uh, other uh, uh, banquets for other for a lot of other reasons. I think. So I think what we're doing on the first floor would satisfy most golfers that I know because I don't think after a round of golf on a hot summer day you want to start trucking up for a second to get a cold beer and, and brag about how well you uh, did. That oval bar was really, really nice. Okay. I got to tell you. All right, so uh, <clears throat> I guess budget guidance only to the GM. Uh, show of hands, we approve the concept, moving ahead so uh, money can be allocated. I guess about $417 you're asking for. 417000 and the And uh, the budget would be amended subsequent to our meeting with the county on Monday, should we find out that there's any other outside elements in, in regards to renovations that we need to address for county code compliance, etc., okay. and that would be incorporated in your final budget presentation. So, show I have a question, Bill. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Beth, if, if you have stationary A B, and you're going to abandon this because if you have a meeting at the city acity group, one day, town hall or something, how will you report? Well, <clears throat> the portable setup, I believe, would we would maintain, but we would supplement with a permanent setup, which was is part of this budget. There was an IT component added into it, so we could purchase new fixed stationary installed equipment, and for the regular operations, that's what we would use. But when it comes to a special meeting, and I know Denise has plans for other broadcasting using the station, so I, I would anticipate. Yep. Upgrades to this equipment as well for non boardroom broadcasting. Okay. Uh, budget guidance purposes <laughs> only. Approval of the concept. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Three meetings and <laughs> how many hours later? Uh, <laughs> motion. Brett, never mind. Easiest row for. Yes, I do. Uh, 
<clears throat> I move that one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars be had fiscal twenty seventeen budget from replacement reserve with repairs and upgrades to the first floor of the Ocean Pines Golf Club. Um, all repairs and upgrades to be managed and uh, complete under supervision of Ocean Pines Public Works. Um, in previous the background of previous meetings, the board is authorized to replace the roof, HVAC systems, and upgrades to the turn of the golf club. This motion will complete the updates to the first floor of the golf club. Um, with the purpose and effect of renovating the existing facilities and updating the bathrooms, um, new flooring, wall finishings, uh, the total budget breakdown um, for American construction means data was um, 49500 dollars in ceramic tile flooring, twenty-four thousand three hundred and ninety ceramic tile, which sorry, that's flooring and walls in the bathroom. $24,392 in general carpeting for the pro shop and hallway areas, um, $16,061 in painting, <coughs> $44,400 in plumbing, which would be in wall as well as fixtures um, required for upgrade. Yeah. Did you have a slide? No, I oh. just... I, <coughs> and, I'll do I have a second? Yeah. I'll second. <coughs> All right, open for discussion. Do you want to put uh, option three's first floor, though? <clears throat> yeah. And this is going to be expended this year? Yes, this will be expended this year if everyone uh, in, in immediate follow up with the turn grill. How much did you add to that? What was the number? I what? asked for 135000 the number by construction means data. There's 132,000 and change, so I just rounded it up. Um, and the same as the other motion um, related to the term grill, we use construction means data, which is outs outsourcing to contractors. Um, our intention is um, as much as available to use public works to complete this and to be purchasing the materials on their wholesale accounts and involving contractors um, only as needed or required. Um, Based on time and or other specific skills that they For your ADA meeting one day or whenever it is, could that impact this? Um, could I mean it could the one thirty five could be one thirty seven? I don't know. I'm just I don't. Wait, I don't anticipate okay. any significant impact for for this year into ADA. I mean, there's no contingency. Is there any? No, there is. Well. Because I believe the number is way over the budget based on oh, us okay. completing the work. Okay. Um, however, it was based on the most accurate data was the construction okay. means data that Jerry pulled with, with the outside. Yes, yeah. and if there, if we do trigger any type of ADA or other issue, that would we would be coming back because it probably plays into a greater discussion on the building, not just renovating. Okay. <clears throat> that that probably probably have taken into consideration the. Width of the hallways and the have already done sort of that look at it in and, terms of ADA. And our engineering support and evaluating the building, everything is to compliance to ADA code. The issue, and the, there's two larger issues that would present a problem to us for ADA compliance. And they would fall into the scenario of renovation or new construction would bear the same expense. The the first issue would be whether our current access for wheelchairs is still applicable for the building based on the renovations taking place, which we believe there is, but we're going to get confirmation from the county and look at the entire picture. And that's with the first floor being accessible from the outside and the second floor being accessible from the lift, from that the half floor lobby up to the second floor. And if for whatever reason it was deemed an elevator was required, that would be a significant impact because that's not factored in any budget of doing anything um, outside of our current environment for access. The second factor is, which um, we took into account in the Beach Club bathroom renovation, because in the Beach Club, we were modifying the location already of toilets and adding additional. So in doing that, we were able to ask for a variance, but we did not, and we just factored moving to the 2010, I believe, standards for ADA compliance on the handicap stall, which increased the stall size for handicap toilets from 48 by 48 to, I 
they were 48 by 42 to 60 by 48, and I don't know, I don't know those exactly. I know that the new stall is a larger stall. The beach club bathrooms we moved automatically to compliance to the new bathroom standards because we were making a modification and felt it was better just to do it than to ask for the variance on the old structure. In this building, we're not talking about adding or changing any toilets. We're just talking about putting new ones in, putting a new flooring around it. So the core structure doesn't change. So it's, it, it is our understanding that we do not have to even consider or apply for a variance to the ADA regulations for that handicap stall size. And we do have a separate uh, ADA restroom that exceeds the 60 by 60 space <coughs> as not a men's or women's, but a separate just handicap bathroom. Um, it's in the, it's accessible from the lower level lobby on the men's room side. And there's a door that's kind of hidden in the cedar. It is actually a handicapped bathroom that I don't know if it's ever used. But it is, it is there, and it would meet the standards. If for whatever reason we're wrong, and we have to modify the layout of the bathroom to accommodate for a larger stall, that would trigger a much larger project in the bathroom renovations because it's going to be actually tearing up slab to move plumbing to accommodate for different toilet locations and could turn it. So the elevator or some major modification to our bathroom footprint because of something that we don't believe exists as an ADA issue, those two factors would alter the project and they would uh, be coming back to revisit. But at this point, we don't see either of those being an issue with the county. We believe that based on what we're doing and not, you know, we're not getting any structural modification. We're just talking updates and really adding partitions on the second floor for usage. There, This is not a event that would trigger either that was a coming to play. But we'll have the confirmation. It's, it's still partitions. It's nothing. We're not like putting an addition on the building where we're adding anything on the exterior. It's partitions are the only thing that are in play and those are monitor. And we're not like changing the wall where the plumbing stack is in the bathroom It'll be a major change in the structural. It's essentially empty party walls that are that are in play right now. Okay. Uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 What do you vote on this? It was 125000 for HVAC and 105000 for the turn grill. Does that bring the total to the uh, that, that, that We are, you're actually at, no, you, you're 105 plus the 135, so you're 240 on the upgrades. But then you have the roof and HVAC money, which okay. it, which that adds another. Uh, we were one twenty plus seventy three, so you're one eighty three on top of two forty. Uh, so you're like four twenty five roughly. We're four twenty five, and then what would be left? Four seventeen upstairs. Second four. Four seventeen. Four seventeen is what you put. Could come in under a million. Well, and. Uh, I, we're on a track record of coming in under the budgets on these using our resources to do it. So, I mean, hopefully we'll be under three quarters of a million by the time we're done. On the budget. On time. <laughs> on time. <laughs> on time. <laughs> we're trying. Ahead of time. Major. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's a good. great slogan. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, that's a great slogan. <laughs> this will be public work new t shirts. <laughs> Make the golf club great again. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask for uh, on an appointment to the elections committee. Uh, Evan Smith. All in favor? Aye. 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 motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can the board tell us anything about what all went on yet with the uh, fire department contract? Okay. It's ongoing. The, the only thing we did was uh, additional.